This is how you drive with multiple locomotives on a circle. All you need is a mobile station and a Dakota M84 from Marklin and of course two locomotives. Before we start, we connect the track box to the track. To do this, we place the red cable on the B for railway power and the brown cable on the neutral. Red to the left and brown to the right. Now it's time for the power to be connected to the track box and also to the mobile station. Engine should be auto detected. Here you can see her in this instance, Lind, who can now start driving. This is the M84 decoder from Marklin and we are currently utilizing it to construct our block section in order to enable two trains to operate on a circular track while being fully controlled automatically. Normally, with this decoder, you can control four signal sections simultaneously and this decoder has an additional advantage. He also functions as a feedback device when you turn this on. You can then connect eight contact tracks to it. Before we begin though, we need to power the decoder by connecting it to the railway power supply. Red on the B and brown on the zero. And then we have to give the decoder an address. In this case, the one. This means a dip switch at one up and all others down. Yes, and now we can even control the decoder with the mobile station and see exactly where it is green and where it is red. Following that, we will proceed to construct our very first signal section utilizing a cable, flat plug sleeves, and a regular pair of pliers. We'll connect these cables directly to the track and to the decoder. We require a minimum of three tracks for the signal section. And as you can observe, I've already isolated the inner track using plastic insulators to prevent any electricity from flowing through. To reconnect the power, we require a red cable with two flat plug-in connectors. We proceed to connect the connectors behind the insulated section on the B for railway power source. Irrelevant, outside or inside, main focus is on B. Now arrives the initial cable that we recently created and that is placed onto the B in the section of insulated track. And we currently link this to the M84 decoder precisely at the location of the green dot. So connect the red cable to the green dot all the way to the right on the first signal. And then we connect the power supply to the vehicle. We do that behind the isolated track section. Then we take the other cable and connect it in the middle of these three sockets. Where the one is written above. Now we can interchange this signal section with the mobile station and come to a stop the train at red and then continue once it turns green. We currently accomplish all of these tasks automatically using contact rails. We manufacture the contact track internally and we need to remove this specific metal piece from a regular track using pliers or side cutters. Later, no electricity should stop here as the train's wheels are meant to bridge the gap and report a train passing through this area. Cut out nicely. On the other hand, this must be done so on both sides at the same place. The metal must be separated here. Now the insulators are coming. For a contact rail, this red insulator must be placed on the right side and a second insulator must be placed on the track behind it, also on the right side. But in order to save a bit of track, we connect it directly to the signal section and also use the insulated joint here again because this will be our track that should be completely without power. To prevent future current flow, an insulator must be placed at the bottom of the middle position inside the contact rail, ensuring no current can pass through this area later on. So here in the middle, right in the inner area, an insulator must also be added. This also applies to the third track. Here again, an insulator must be placed in the middle, and then a small red insulating connector must be placed in the middle again, so that the middle track is without power and the train can stop there. Here also we need to connect it later with a cable in order to connect the B on one side behind the insulated section and on the other side behind the insulated section. And here you can once again observe the contact track separated and on the side. Contact track behind power off section for contact directly. Now we need two cables and a flat plug sleeve because we want the contact track to trigger two things at the same time. Once the contact track should switch the signal behind it to red, and at the same time the contact track should switch the signal in the block in front of it to green. 
Therefore, we have to connect two cables to this one contact track so that we can trigger two actions in the decoder. Currently, we must connect the two cables to the decoders to ensure that the signal is switched to red while simultaneously ensuring that the signal behind it is switched to green at the same time. We have to set this later for all contact tracks and all signals. This is a bit of trial and error to figure out which plug goes in which position, but you can consider it. The one cable must be placed on the red position and the other cable must be placed on the green position. This can be easily tested. Now we have to connect another track and it has to be connected to the zero and the T on the decoder so that the contact track also works. And we require the entire thing three times now for three signal sections with three contact tracks. Now it's time for the first locomotive. We can try it out and you can see if it works from the LEDs. They now light up red or green depending on the position of the signals and what our locomotive triggers with the contact track. Yes, and when everything works, then it's time for the second locomotive, and you can see that if a section in front is occupied, the locomotive behind stops until the front section is free. 